Hello, welcome to the next installment of the series of videos, Singing with Peggy. Last session, we went over the four steps for finding postural alignment, the floating four different directions with the conditioned responses to the vowel sounds. So today we're going to start there and then expand upon the idea to become more comfortable with our posture breath, adding more about the actual breath, and then we will add some exercises that will include some phonation. Yes, we're going to sing a little bit today. So just to remember, our first step is to allow my neck to be free so that my, my skull may float upward. So we're gonna let the jaw relax, and we're going to form the letter or the vowel ah. As we inhale through that ah, we will think of just slightly floating the skull upward. And this was our number one on the vowel ah. We will do three of those breaths. Number two, allow my spine to release into length so my torso may open and also widen. So we are going to think in terms of our arrows going up and down. So number two, we just let the tongue rise a little bit higher and we will inhale on an E vowel. Again, it's silent inhalation, but that is the formation inside the mouth. So we will do three of those breaths on the E. Number three, allow my hip joints to be free so my legs may release away from my pelvis, allowing the knees to unlock and stay soft. This we will breathe through the formation of a vowel oo, so we're kind of sipping in the air. Three of the number three vowel and breath. And number four, allow my shoulders to release away from my torso. Arms will relax at the side, and we will breathe through the semi-vowel or semi-consonant of an NG, so that the air is going to be going in and out, inhaling, exhaling through the nose. Now, one last little thing about our postural alignment. You can't see on this video, so I'm just going to maybe see if I can point it down um, and get my feet in the view. Let's see. My feet are going to be just directly under my shoulders. So if you can see, I'm wearing my cute little sports socks feet are nicely, evenly aligned. Well, that wasn't the best thing, but hopefully you can understand that I'm thinking in terms of body alignment from the shoulders down through the hip bones, knees, and then down to feet that are nicely supporting my body hauser, as Dr. Hauser liked to say. And again, this is from Dr. Thomas Hauser. Now, our next step, once that we've released Loaded, unlocked our knees. We're going to think in terms of kind of vacuuming all the air out of our body. And then once we have no air left, we'll feel some tightness in our abdominals. And then we're just going to allow them to release in a plop. So I'm going to take a breath and then blow all my air out. And you can see the expansion in my midriff. So we're gonna call that plop. All I did was allow 
my abdominal muscles to release, the abdominal wall released. So that's a very simplistic inhalation 101. We all know about the diaphragm and we like to talk about diaphragmatic breathing. The diaphragm is sitting a dome right under the rib cage and when we inhale, which is going to happen uh, involuntarily, fortunately all night so that we uh, wake up in the morning, we didn't think about inhaling. So for singing, it's really inhalation is preparing our body, our physical self, so that the natural process of inhalation is going to happen. So by releasing the abdominal wall and the pelvic floor to some extent, all the way down, then the diaphragm will find its lowest position when we plop. So the diaphragm contracted and we just got out of the way, got all of the viscera, everything in our abdominal cavity out of the way. So that's kind of a, a passive experience. Uh, one of the other um, books that I have used was for theater students and the particular author, which I will put in the comments section, so you'll have all of these resources, uh, believe that a lot of times we work so hard on inhalation and people get very caught up and tied up in it. Sometimes maybe it's best just to think of starting with exhalation. So we're going to think about a baseball diamond and that the pelvic floor will be home base. And I'm a baseball fan, so I like this imagery. So we're going to think about singing from home plate. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So we'll be exhaling and phonating, singing on the breath that originates really low in our body. And that also helps with the concept of relaxing. Now, the air does not go there. I'm gonna be scientific about that. The air is in our lungs, but the idea is that we are preparing a space, an expanded space for maximum drop of the diaphragm, maximum filling of the lungs. And then what we have to do as singers, which is to do a little bit of opposition to mother nature. The diaphragm wants to just return back to its tall and domed position, the natural recoil. So we're going to work a little bit on an opposition. The Italians call it a paggio. There is an opposing force and we are going to try to stay expanded and allow the abdominals to contract very slowly so that we have an extended amount of controlled breath or we should probably say management. The actual vocal folds are the valve that control the expansion of is that a word? Uh, the exhalation, the using of the breath to sing. But our breath management allows that breath stream to be even and steady, sufficient, but not too much, so that we can have nice, efficient phonation. The other muscles that are going to be involved will be the rectus abdominis. Now, they're those six pack muscles go up and down in your abdominal wall. And those muscles are not actively involved in the singing process. However, they must be released. And if you're really tight, if you've been doing a lot of sit-ups and ab exercises, you've got to learn how to release those muscles. So these are really important that that set of muscles releases so that you have an expanded released abdominal wall. The external obliques are involved and they will help the rib cage and it kind of moves up like two bucket handles on either side, up and out. And when they contract, they will give you the room from side to side. So we could think in terms of our baseball analogy, you've got first base and you've got third base. So those are the two involved in the expansion of the rib cage. Then there are also internal obliques, which are on the inside. And these are, of course, obliques so that they're going this way. And those particular muscles, again, are part of the recoil action. They, they move along with the diaphragm and they are not something that we are trying to control, but they will be slowed down a little bit in their actions by our work with 
external obliques and allowing the release of these other muscles. The transverse abdominis, the, rib, the muscles that move across the abdomen are also involved and they're part of that release and expansion that we want to keep. So now that we have talked about the muscles that are involved, the other thing that we want to be sure is that we have what Richard Miller, another wonderful vocal pedagogue of the last century and early into this century, would talk about the noble posture. So we are going to find that position right after we've done our plop. So we've done our one, two, three, four, plop, and then just a momentary feeling that we're going to make sure the sternum, the breastbone, is up for our noble posture. And at that moment, then we can begin the exhalation process. So the rib cage is expanded, the abdominal wall and the pelvic floor muscles have released, and now we'll gently do something that we will call tuck. And that is the action of the abdominal wall and the pelvic floor gently contracting while we are keeping our rib cage expanded with open ribs and then the diaphragm will slowly return to its natural domed position. So if um, we are wanting to work a little bit on that, let's try an inhalation on the consonant it's a nice voiced, continuous consonant so that you can really use your breath stream. So we're going to go through our steps. One, two, three, four, plop, pause, noble posture, and then we're going to And notice I had one last little pause before I did my next plop. Sometimes in singing a phrase within a song, you might have to do a quicker catch breath, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. So let's exhale to a count of eight, and I will help guide you through this. So is your posture creative? Let's do four breaths of one, two, three, four. We'll do the pause. Make sure the sternum is up, rib cage is out, and then we are going to exhale to a count of eight counts on a v. So here we go. One, two, three, four, plop. Sternum up and and another expansive breath. Okay, you can practice that a lot. Extend the length of time that you are expelling that sound. Now, the next little thing is to talk a little more about that ribcage expansion. And Richard Miller really was uh, involved a lot in emphasizing the importance of the ribcage expansion. So what you're going to do is put your index finger beneath your lower rib and we're going to think in terms of taking a breath and then we're going to sing a short pitch and then take another breath, a short pitch, and another breath. And each one of those will show you that you can get even more expansion. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to use an E vowel um, just for future reference. E tends to get the best closure of the vocal folds and so that we can get the most efficient phonation on it. So, got my hands in position. And here we go. E, E, E. Did you see that I had a continual expansion? So even though we think we're wide open, letting our rib cage lift and expand outward, we can go a little bit farther. So let's do E, E, E. 
Then we'll take a full breath and we'll do A, A, A. Take a full breath and then we're going to do Ha, Ha, Ha. So here we go. Ready and E, E. So that's a way that you can work on making sure that your rib cage is staying nice and expanded. Another kind of fun exercise for really working on keeping um, the breath moving, the recoil actions happening, and finding some quick catch breaths uh, so you can really feel the action going on. Oh, and I never told you about second base, which is about the point of the epigastrium. And you will oftentimes feel some bouncing, especially if you're doing detached singing, staccato work, or some of these breath exercises. So if you feel that little pulsing there, you'll probably will on this exercise. So we're going to say in full voice, repatika, repatika. So repeat that after me. Repatika, repatika. And I used a little roll dark because it uses up some extra breath. Then we're going to do eight counts on some silent breath consonants. These are unvoiced. The first one is shh. So the next step will be shh, 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 shh. Eight counts, so I'm kind of conducting in four, four. The next one is just a sibilant S. S, 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 S. The next one is what I sometimes call the cat hiss, and actually I have a cat outside on my deck who is meowing to come in, but she's just gonna have to wait. But she might be doing shh. So it's actually um, the sound in the, the, uh, the German ish sound. So it has a C with a Cedia in phonetics if you know the phonetic alphabet. But it's shh. So then we're gonna do that. And then kind of a fun sound, it sort of looks like whit with the PF in front of it. So we'll do that eight times. All right, so, so far, this is the pattern. Repatika, repatika. Notice that the put actually had a vowel sound, so some phonation. And our final sound is going to actually be with a released catch breath in between each one. So we're going to go whit, 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 okay, with a full breath in between, between each one. And this also will be posted in the comment section of this video on the Peggy Holloway Voice Studio Facebook page. So here is the entire exercise. Repatika, repatika. Put, 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 Good. So you can get lots of practice. Feel the little bounces going there. Um, and. Finally, an exercise that we're going to do to think in terms of the keeping of the apajo, the expanded rib cage, as well as the diaphragm doing its movement very slowly up as we carefully control our exhalation. Sorry about the phone ringing in the background. Um, hopefully it didn't make too much noise. So fi our final exercise for this particular video is going to be a, a sustained, very gentle, careful pitch, kind of in the medium of the voice. You might want to pick um, a C, a low C, if you are a baritone or a bass, um, or an alto, and then for a soprano or tenor, or just about really any voice, um, the pitch F above middle C or below middle C, depending on if you're a treble or a bass. So it's going to be like this, we'll do our our steps, the one, two, 
three, four, pause, plop, pause, and then we will inhale. And at the end, a nice plop re-inhalation. You can hold that pitch as long as you would like to. Uh, if it starts getting a little wobbly and unsteady, it's probably time to take your inhalation. Very soft, very focused, and very gentle. One last thing before um, we end this particular video is another thing that we will go uh, um, into in more detail in the next lesson is that as we are inhaling, another important thing to do is to watch that we have a really relaxed mouth cavity, especially in the back of the throat, so that there is no tension in the mouth and the throat, the tongue. So we wanna release our neck, our jaw, and our tongue as we do our inhalations. Um, and lifting of the soft palate is something we will get into when we talk about resonance, but this can be part of our inhalation. So you almost want to think about you're opening an umbrella, and that umbrella is the roof of your mouth, your palate. So as we do our inhalations, we're doing tongue is going with the jaw behind the bottom front teeth. The soft palate is opening like an umbrella. And that will allow us to inhale quietly and truly just let the breath fall into us. Then we will sing, phonate from, home plate. We'll gradually move up while we're keeping our rib cage out and expanded. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time where we will continue to add our breathing process to actual singing of some more vocal exercises and begin to talk about the vocal folds themselves and getting the most efficient vibratory sound that we can produce. Thanks. Practice breathing.